determinants by cofactor expansion, there are several ways we can find the so-called determinant. Um, this word determinant, as it relates to a matrix, is that uh, for any square matrix, there will always exist a number that we call a determinant. So the determinant is just a number associated with the square matrix. That number has several properties uh, as related to the matrix as if uh, to a human uh, body, your DNA says a whole lot about you. Uh, but you have to know how to decode the DNA to be able to decipher what's there and what it means in relationship to that particular person. And so as we go throughout this course, and, and, and even uh, this course does not touch, I think, the, the uh, magnitude of what's uh, encoded within the so-called, this number, the determinant. Um, but we can use that number to do a whole lot of things uh, for linear algebra. And so uh, we talk uh, very simply about uh, uh, its definition. Um, and note that uh, you can only compute the determinant for a, a square matrix. And so it might be on the test that I give you a two by three matrix and ask you to compute the determinant. You say there that it does not exist because a two by three is not a square matrix. So, um, <clears throat> the various notations for a determinant. So we denote the determinant of a matrix A by writing here DET and then parentheses A to symbolize the determinant of a matrix. Or we can write the matrix A and uh, within uh, these uh, slash markings, which denote that this is not uh, no longer just a matrix, but we're talking about the determinant of the matrix. Um, or here, we can take the actual matrix itself, for example, a two by two, and we put the, the slash bar on the outside. Still good. So um, we start simply part A, find the determinant for a two by two matrix. We look at that as just being the, uh, the cross multiplication uh, of the diagonals. Um, anytime we're going from uh, left to right and computing the determinant, uh, uh, the sign is positive and uh, we go from uh, left to right uh, is positive. And if we look at the diagonal, uh, well, actually, it's going from left to right going down. I don't know if somebody broke this thing. They're using the, the Tommy Boy, uh, the movie, when uh, I think he, had, he was driving his friend's car. And, Somebody before me. Let's see if we can get that to work now. So anyway, look at this two by two with the entries A, B, C, and D inside the uh, the matrix of the determinant. Just the cross multiplication A times D, and then it becomes minus C times uh, B or minus B times C. So in other words, you're going from left to right, from basically up to down, then uh, it's a positive sign. Then we go from left to right, going uh, upward, uh, then the sign is negative. We'll talk about why that is and how you get the signs in front, especially if it's a three by three or four by four matrix. You, we get a little bit more complicated in terms of trying to calculate the uh, so-called determinant. And so uh, very simply, here, 
we take uh, as an example let what is that? let the matrix A have these entries here one two three and four and so this implies that the determinant of A is equal to the one times the four minus the two times the three just get negative two so where have you seen this before Anyone? That's right. In computing the inverse of a two by two matrix, indeed. Let the matrix A equal to the entries A, B, C, D. And we said that the, not equal to, forgive me. This implies that A inverse is equal to 1 over AD minus BC. And then we interchange the D and the A, and we negated the B and the C. And so this was actually 1 over the determinant of A. And then here we have D, negative B, negative C, and A. So, so we had uh, decoded. Uh, there that determinant a long time ago for that two by two inverse formula um, when we had talked about that. Very good. Uh, I think it's very straightforward. Let A equal to this matrix, eight, zero, 10, and four. So this implies that the determinant of A is the 8 times the 4 minus the 0 times 10. Well, let's go a little bit higher. Part B, uh, how to find the determinant of a 3 by 3 matrix or larger here we use the arrow technique. Now that may be something that if you've had physics or if you've taken physics, you've seen that in Dr. Goldman's class. So, um, so for the arrow technique, you will rewrite the first two columns uh, side by side um, this uh, matrix. So negative 2, 3, 1, 1, 5, 6. And so we we'll multiply the diagonals going from uh, top to down, so positive signs in front. So here we have uh, negative 20, and here minus 7, and then here 12 times uh, the 6. Now we go in the the opposite direction, going from uh, from the bottom upward, the diagonal, <laughs> a minus sign. So this is going to be minus 20. And this is minus here. Um, pardon me. Oh, it is negative. That's right. Hmm. 
So we go this way. So it's a minus sign in front, and this is negative times negative is positive. So here we get 42 times the 2, then minus 6. So we simplify all of that, negative 40, negative 50, 53, plus 72, minus 84, comes out to be negative 65. Have you all seen the arrow technique before? And so you were computing the, the determinant uh, even then. All right. So again, using the, the arrow technique, so going this way, we get zero here, negative five, and here, plus 42, going the opposite direction, minus zero. Here this becomes negative times that negative, so we get positive, 35, and here, minus six. We compute this, we get negative 11 with the Getting the negative, right? Yeah, I knew something was wrong. So it's a negative 35. Yeah, the, the numbers wasn't adding up correctly. So <laughs> very good. So that gives us 42 minus 46 negative 4. Now, uh, where we're headed here is to be able to compute the determinant by using cofactor expansion. Um, in calculus 3, when you're, even in calculus 2, when you're computing the cross product and then you're having to determine uh, whether or not a vector field is conservative um, in the space, you're actually using cofactor expansion. So um, to be able to build the cofactor expansion, we talk about uh, here the minors and the cofactors. Uh, let A, oh my goodness, let A be a square matrix. Let A be a square matrix. The minor of, of each entry uh, in the matrix, AIJ, is denoted by a capital MIJ. And the minor is said to be the determinant of the submatrix uh, found by deleting the, the ith row and the jth column uh, from the matrix. Here, the cofactor of the entry, uh, little AIJ, is given as here this permutation that we denote negative one to the i plus j times its associated minor. Um, and, and so here, just a note there, the negative one uh, to the i plus j is either negative or positive depending on the position there in the matrix. If the position is even, then that's positive one. If that position is, is odd, it's gonna be negative one. Uh, how do you determine if that position is, is odd or, or even? Um, you, you look at the row position plus the column position. So if it's the first row, first column, one plus one is two, even. 
um, if it's the first row, second column, one plus two is three, odd. So, um, and then once you, once you get one, then the next one is gonna be the opposite. So if the first position is even, the next one's odd, the next one is even, that kind of thing. We call these signs the, the permuta permutations. Basically, uh, you get all various combinations uh, in terms of the positives and the negatives uh, all coupled together. Uh, we call it, in, in mathematical term, uh, just uh, a permutation. Um, so here, use the following chart to determine uh, the signs. This is a three by three chart. So we're looking for uh, the signs Uh, where the negative one to the i plus j is uh, determined. So if it's a three by three, so this is row one, row two, row three, column one, column two, column three. So that first position is plus because this is the row one, column one, so one plus one is two. So for that first position, this is negative doing that. This is negative 1 to the 1 plus 1, negative 1 to the second, so it's positive 1. Let's take this one then we'll move on. Uh, this is negative 1 to the first row, second column, 1 plus 2. So this is negative 1 to the third, we get negative 1. So again, um, if you know one position, if you know its sign, then uh, all the, uh, the signs that follow would just alternate. So plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus, and so on. We need that sign with the so-called minor to be able to find the, the so-called cofactor. We can t find the determinant by the expansion of cofactors either along a row or along a column. So here the definition for determinant by cofactor ex expansion. And, and for this one, I only put in the expansion um, along a row. I did not put the expansion along a column. You can find it along the column. Uh, I normally try to compute the determinant uh, using a row expansion. So that's what I left here. So here, let, uh, let A be an, an n by n matrix. I can only find the determinant for a square matrix. Then the determinant of A can be determined by so-called here cofactor expansion in the following way. Um, and, and so basically, if I take the, the ith row of a matrix, uh, the, the determinant is said to be the, the entry of the matrix times its associated cofactor. And the cofactor is determined by the sign times its minor. And I can go right along that row with these uh, cofactors uh, here summed up and I can find the determinant. And here's the neat thing, doesn't matter what row you pick, the determinant will still be the same. So if you pick the first row to do that expansion, you'll get the same determinant if you pick the second row or the third row. Matter of fact, you can, you can do uh, cofactor expansion along the column, column one, or column two, or column three. You will still get the same determinant. Uh, that determinant for a square matrix is said to be unique that if you find that determinant, that's the only one for that particular matrix. So, um, so the next question is, if we give you a matrix, can you find all the cofactors? Uh, that gets a bit lengthy. Um, normally, we don't need all of those cofactors to find the determinant. I just need the ones along a row or a column. But later on in section 2.3, we'll raise the question, is it possible to find the inverse using only cofactors? And if you do that, then you have to find all the cofactors for that particular, for that entire matrix. And then uh, we have something called the, the adjoint formula. And the adjoint formula is basically um, one over the determinant times the matrix of adjoints, which is the, all the cofactors um, transposed. So for that situation, you wouldn't need all the cofactors. Other than that, I, you wouldn't dare find all these uh, things. So, so here, the determinant of a, 
of an end by end matrix can be computed by multiplying the entries uh, in any row, just trying to explain here how to find the determinant by cofactor expansion. The determinant uh, can be found uh, here by computing and multiplying the entries in any row by their respected cofactors, and then just adding up those products. Uh, so again, the cofactor is uh, the, its particular sign association, negative one or positive one, times its minor. <coughs> so now, find all minors and cofactors of uh, the matrix A. So I want to do that right now. And I think the way I have it set up is, is I do this one, and the next problem we just find, uh, find the determinant using the cofactors, then I think there's one for you to do. And for this particular problem, no need to find all the cofactors. We just uh, compute the determinant uh, just using an expansion for um, of the cofactors along a particular row. Or you can even find it along a particular column. But here, here's a question. Find all the minors and cofactors uh, of this matrix. So I'm going to find first M11. We'll just find all of these guys. And then once we find all the minors, we'll come back and find the, the cofactor. The, the difference between the cofactor and the minor is that sign in front, that negative or positive. Without that sign in front, then it's, we're just talking about the minor. Uh, the minor with its permutation, we get the cofactor. Right? So here, we compute M11. The minor says, take the, the uh, so-called matrix and if I'm looking for M-I-J, delete the i-th row, delete the j-th column, and then you find that sub-matrix determinant. So here I delete the first row and column. The sub-matrix is 7, negative 1, 1, and 4. So here we get, this is the determinant that we're computing. We get 28 plus 1. We get 29. So now we find M12. Here, this says delete the first row, second column, and you find the determinant of that submatrix that has resulted here 6, negative 3, negative 1, and 4. So here we get 24. Minus 3, you get 21. So next, we move to M13, delete the first row, third column. Here we have the, the submatrix, the determinant of the submatrix. We get 6, 7, negative 3, and 1. So it gives us 6 plus. 21, here we get 27. So now we, we look at the minors along the, the second row. So we compute M21. That is, delete the second row, first column. We take the determinant of the submatrix, negative 2, 3, 1, and 4. So this gives us negative 8 minus 3, negative 11. So now M22. Delete the second row, second column. This is 1, negative 3, 3, and 4. So this is 4 plus minus uh, 9 is, is, is 4 plus 9, and then now M23, delete the second row, third column, get 1, negative 2, negative 3 and 1, so we get here 1, This is minus, because they're both negative, so this is 1 minus 
uh, positive 6. Now we go to the third row. So M31 here. Delete the third row, first column, to the determinant of the submatrix that includes the negative 2, 3, 7, negative 1. So this is 2 minus 21, negative 19, M32. Here we delete the third row, second column. We find the determinant of the submatrix that has entries 1, 6, 3, negative 1. So we get negative 1 minus 18, negative 19. And then M, the last one, 3, 3. Delete the third row, third column. We find the determinant of the submatrix that has entries 1, negative 2, 6, and 7. We get 6 here minus a negative 12 is 6 plus 12. We get 18. Oh, it's 7. That's right. So, okay. We get 19. Thank you. So those are the minors. So now the, the cofactors. And I, I write it formally here, but I think, you know, basically for the cofactors, you know how the signs are oriented, that negative or positive sign. So the minor associated with this one, which was this guy right here, is going to be a positive sign in front of that. The minor associated with this guy is the M12. It's a negative sign associated with that guy. The sign associated here uh, would be positive, so it's a positive sign in front of that. Um, we come to M21. Uh, this position here is odd, so it's going to be a negative sign associated in front of that minor. So let's, let's look at that. So here C11 is negative 1 to the 1 plus 1 times its associated minor. Well, this is just positive 1 times the 29, and that's all you have. For C12, it's negative 1 to the 1 plus 2 times m12. So this is negative 1 times 21. So this is negative 21. C13, negative 1 to the 1 plus 3 times m13. Well, m13, we got 27. A negative 1 to the fourth power is positive 1 times 27. That's just 27. C21 is negative 1 to the 2 plus 1 times M21. We got M21. That was uh, negative uh, 11. And here, this is negative 1 to the third power times negative 11. So this is negative 1 times negative 11, that's just 11. C22 is negative 1 to the 2 plus 2 times M22. Well, M22 was 13. Negative 1 to the fourth is positive. 1 times 13, we just get 13. C23, negative 1 to the 2 plus 3 times M23. Well, M23 was negative 5. Negative 1 to the, to the fifth power is odd, so that's just negative 1 times negative 5. Just get 5. C31, negative 1 to the 3 plus 1 times M31. Well, this is just positive 1 
just say negative 1 to the 4th. And then we got this number here. That was negative 19. So we get negative 19. C32, negative 1 to the 3 plus 2 times M32. So this is negative 1 times negative 19. We get positive 19. And then C33 is negative 1 to the 3 plus 3 times M. 3, 3. Well, this is just positive 1 times m33, and we got that to be 19. So we have the, the associated minors, and then also the associated cofactors. Right? Now, the next question is to take the same matrix, find the determinant. Um, doesn't matter how you expand. Okay. Doesn't matter how you expand it. We still should come up with this number, uh, 152. So let's see. Expand the matrix A by cofactor expansion here in the following way. Let me take the first one. Here I'm going to expand along the first row. So here we say that the determinant of A is equal to, let me just write it out, this is going to be A11 times C11 plus A 1, 2 times C, 1, 2 plus A, 1, 3 times C, 1, 3. The good thing is that we found all these cofactors in the previous example. Right? So A, 1, 1 is 1 times C, 1, 1, and C, 1, 1 is 29. And then it's plus A, 1, 2, but A, 1, 2 is negative 2, so just write negative 2 times C, 1, 2. And C12 is negative 21. And then plus A13, which is 3, times C13, and that's 27. If you check that, it should come out to be 152. your help. Let's see. See if I can get uh, Michael Higdon and James. Expand along the second row. Find the determinant. Expand along the second row. And you should still get 152. Let's see. Expand along the second row. see and number three is it Stephen and is it Luke Luke okay Luke uh, Stephen and Luke expand along the third row matter of fact let me let me include uh, Stephen Luke and what's the name again Tyler I'm sorry Tyler 
you're so quiet. It's, everybody's quiet in this room. <laughs> Expand. Along the third row. Let's see here. Um, William and Patricia, if you all can expand along the first column. Expand along the second column. And then Michael, uh, we'll leave you by yourself to expand along the third column. And you all have expanded along what the first column? Okay. Did y'all get it? Yes. Yes, sir. see that you still come up with the same determinant, doesn't matter which row or which column you, you choose. Let me look at one for the column since uh, we looked at uh, along the first row. Let's take along the uh, first column, find that. So we're going to have entries in front of those uh, uh, cofactors, 1, 6, and negative 3. So here, Determinant of A is going to be A11 times C11 plus, if it's along that first column, this is going to be A21 times C21 plus A31 times C31. So A11 was that 1, and then C11. 29, and then A21 was the 6, and then the C21 was the 11, plus 6 times 11, and then this A31, which is negative 3, well, I guess I should say plus negative 3. times C31, and the C31 is negative 19. And when you multiply that out, you should come up with 152. It doesn't matter which order, whether it's column one, two, or three, or row one, two, or three, you'll still get the same one, uh, the same determinant. Is everybody happy with that? Okay. All right. 
Now, see if you can find this determinant. And here's a neat thing. It says compute the determinant of the following, uh, the following matrix by cofactor expansion. You can use any row you want to expand along or any column you want to expand on. But let me give you an inside tip. If there's a row that has a zero in it, pick that row because that's going to be zero times that cofactor. So no need to even compute its cofactor factor for that particular position. So I would pick like along the first row or along the third row. Or watch this. Pick along the uh, second column. You're only computing one guy there. You see that? I mean, that's, that's a whole lot quicker to, uh, to get to. So, uh, so do that. Pick any row you want, any column you want. And uh, let's see if you get negative 40. So let me pick along the, the first row, and then after that, I pick along the, the second column. The second column is, is the first choice because you got two zeros there. So here, this is negative 3. Delete the first row, uh, first column, 5, 1. Zero, five, plus zero, right? You don't need to deal with anything there. And then plus seven, delete its row and column, times the sub uh, matrix, two, five, negative one, zero. And this is along the first row. It's negative 3 times 25 plus 7 times, this is 0, plus uh, 5. So we get negative 75 plus 35 is negative 40. And then here, what about along the second column. So the determinant of A would be that 5. Delete its row and column is negative 3, 7, negative 1, 5. So uh, again, we kn I know that the sign for that permutation is going to be uh, positive 1 there. So just put positive 5 there. So this is 5 times negative 15 plus 7. Okay. Is everybody straight with that? Good. Let me not bore you with that. It's, again, just very straightforward for the determinant using cofactor expansion. You'll get that answer over there. You can do that some other time. The last thing in this section is uh, very neat properties for a triangular matrix or a um, diagonal matrix. If the matrix is diagonal or triangular, then it's easy to compute the determinant. If the matrix is diagonal or triangular, then the determinant is simply the product of the entries along the main diagonal. Okay. So if I give these matrices some names, so here the determinant for A is simply negative 1. Determinant for B is 8. The determinant for C is 24. That's off. Okay. Um, section 2.1 is even quicker than this. It's just only one idea. Uh, let me cover that. Give me about 10 minutes, and then we'll be done. Okay. 
Uh, chapter two is usually a, a, a user-friendly uh, chapter and exam. There's only three sections here. Um, and so uh, that'll go by pretty quick. Typically, uh, in the past, people tend to do, I think everybody tend to make like an A on this chapter two uh, exam. Uh, it's very straightforward. So any questions there on 2.1?